Hello and welcome back to the Treble 2 series. Today we're going to be doing a pre-flight on the Treble 2. Now as with previous videos that we've done, pre-flight isn't a technical briefing, it's just an introduction to how to pre-flight a Bell Treble 2 helicopter. So as with all Bell product, and most aircraft in fact, you always start at the nose, down one side, up to the top, around the back, and repeat down the side. Now because it's twin engine, dual hydraulics, retractable undercarriage, there's a little more to look at than there is on say a 206, but a pre-flight is exactly the same thing. You're just looking for things that are actually wrong. So it's not just open the panel and take a look, actually have a good look and make sure the aircraft is fit for flight. So the first thing we check on the treble two is the front of the aircraft and the screens. We're checking for damage. As we said in the previous video, these are glass screens, so it's pretty unlikely they'll have any damage. We take a lower look at the nose wheel, check the condition of the tire, the linkage for the undercarriage, but we'll take a slightly better look as we come around the side. We check our pitot. There's nothing down the end of the pitot, standard for any helicopter. This is our 28 volt receptacle. Check that the latches are on and secure, which they are. This is a fresh air vent here, so this could be open, but that's nothing to worry about. These are our two static lines for the pitot system. We check that they're both clear, which they are. We check the integrity of the hinges for the doors, which are both fine. The general condition of the door and the glass. This is a window that does actually open, so obviously if that was open, it's not a problem. Moving down the side, we check the cabin door, again the same, checking the hinges, condition of the transparency, the door locks, fitment of the door. While we're down here with my handy torch, we will just take another closer look at the front nose wheel. And we're checking for any leaks, distortion, obviously tire damage, everything looks good on there. Now for the rest of the aircraft, obviously it's all quite at a higher level. So what we'll do is climb up onto the sponson so then we can check from the forward side there, going back through the engine, and everything on top will be done from the other side. So you can climb up without a set of steps, it's just a little easier. There is a footstep here, which is convenient, there's one also the other side. And this is a really cool step, folds into the airframe. Surprise, we don't have that on newer aircraft. So for the next part, we do need our trusty torch. It's not mine, I nicked it off someone else. This is our rotor brake reservoir here. So we're just checking that the fluid level is correct. It's here, which is correct. And then a quick check forward of all the linkages that are in the front. Again, we're looking for any kind of chafing, damage, loose wires, anything that shouldn't be in there really. That all looks good. Moving backwards, we check this hydraulic system here. There's a pop out filter here, same as on all the other bell systems. We check that the pin is retracted, which it is. We check for any leaks around the input and the output. They both look fine. And really what we're trying to see is up here, which we'll show you a close up of, of the three servos. And we're looking for, again, leakage, chafing pipes, anything that is not as it should be. We can also see part of the nodal beam from here for the transmission. So that's always worth having a very good look on. So then we're going to move slightly aft. This is our hydraulic reservoir for this hydraulic system on this side. There's a sight glass window just here. We can see that it's full of hydraulic fluid, which is helpful. So while we're here and we've got a torch in our hand and the linkage is this visible, take the time just to have a look. Any more time you spend looking, the better. We'll have a quick look at the grip. 
and really also the bottom side of this enormous rotor blade and again we're just looking for anything on the last flight that may have hit the blade or hanger rash which is one of the more common ones and that all looks superb moving aft again we have our transmission oil level here you do need a torch for it just to check that the level is correct which this one is perfect and then behind this door we can see that this is our engine oil level this is engine number two there is a sight glass just on the side here and we can see that the oil level is absolutely correct again while we're in this area we'll check the drive shaft which we can see through the back here for engine number two and we can also see the center drive shaft as well for the tail rotor which also looks good so again we're looking for leaks any form of chafing anything out of the ordinary really so now we've checked the forward fluids we're now going to move to the engine but before we do that we're just going to have a quick look down the air intake it's a big intake so we just want to make sure that while it was in the hangar nobody decided to make it their new home Moving on to the engine cowling door, you can see this wire here. This is actually a fire wire, so it's got fire warning for engines one and two. This is engine number two. Clearly, if there was a fire, this wire would melt, bring a light on the dash, so we know we've got an engine fire. We could then fire the fire bottle, shut the engine down as appropriate. So that all looks integral and good. We then want to look at this intake chamber, which is actually quite a clever design. There's no inlet barrier filter or a particle separator on a treble two. What you have is this. Now the air comes through the intake, through here. Excess air that we don't want goes out the back and all the particles with it. The air that the engine needs passes through here, down into here and into the compressor. Now it's a really clever design because it actually keeps the compressors incredibly clean, but also reduces the noise of the engine. And there's such a loud aircraft with these big paddle blades every little helps as they say so we check the integrity of the catches for the chamber which are good fore and aft and then we as we do on any helicopter that we look at we start at the top work our way around and we're checking for chafing and leaks start a motor here we're having a look to any leaks that are coming forward out of the accessory gearbox and none and we'll work our way down past the fcu any leaks any chafing everything looks good we check this linkage here now this is quite a clever system as well. This has a solenoid on it and before you can go out of idle into fly there's a button you press on the collective which we'll show you on the startup video which releases this pin here and allows you to go to full fly. But then checking our pipes, anything that's chafing or leaking into the igniter box here, check the connectors on both sides which are both good. Onto our intake side, we're looking for any cracks or defects or you get a, a sooting if there's anything leaking. Onto the turbine section, the nozzles all look really good. There's no fuel leaks, no oil leaks. Everything is looking good so far. Then we'll have a look in the bottom of the engine pan and make sure that we've got no leaks. There's a very small amount of residue, which is not a new aircraft. But overall, the engine looks in fabulous condition. So back onto the ground for the next part. We're now going to check in here, which is where the fire bottles are located. Now. This one doesn't actually have its fire bottles fitted at the moment. They're away for inspection, but we would just look through here. We would see the pressure on the gauge to make sure everything's well within pressure. The next thing we want to have a look at is down the back of the exhaust. Again, we're looking for, same as the intake, make sure that nothing in the hangar has decided to set up home in a nice warm environment. We're also looking at the back of the turbine to check the condition of the blades. And these engines look brand new, They're so clean. Down the back of the jet pipe, there's no oil collecting in the bottom, which is another thing that's a spider's cobweb, but that's about it. Moving aft, we're then going to have a look down the bottom of the fuselage, onto the tail boom where it joins here. But we're just again looking for the integrity of the aerials and any obvious leaks or damp. So moving on from looking down the exhaust, we go to the tail boom, the anti-coal light, check the condition. We would obviously have our power on and check the anti-coal light is working. We again check our fasteners as we do on all our pre-flights to make sure the screws are all aligned. The condition of the drive shaft cover is good. We check the slat on the forward leading edge of the stabilizer, checking the top skin. Again, we're always looking for anything that may have happened in the hangar or on our last flight. Have a look underneath the stabilizer. Again, same kind of things, any hangar rash, any bird damage, etc. 
looking on the end plates the leading edge is good and true there's nothing happened in the last flight trailing edge of the stabilizer no damage moving aft down the tail boom integrity of the aerial inspection plate here and onto the fin now again as we've done on other videos always take time to look at the leading edge of the fin and make sure that nothing has impacted on this leading edge and we're just looking at the general condition of the skins forward uh, lower and uh, upper and they all look good again if we had our lights on we check our rear nav light here and the final part at the end is the stinger moving on from the stinger the next thing we check is our tow rotor gearbox oil level which is here we can see the sight glass here handily outside of the cowling we can see the level is halfway up which is good the next thing we want to check is the pitch change mechanism so we start here and we're just checking for any obvious signs of excessive wear any damage check our counterweights here checking our pitch link changes same as on a 206 or 505 or 407 it's four to check in total they all feel very good we obviously want to check the leading edge of this blade for any damage again hanger rash in-flight damage and the general service of the blade and condition now you may remember from the 505 video we checked the feather bearings by holding one blade over and checking the play in the feather bearings by holding here now the treble two there's quite a bit of wear there but that's believe it or not that's well within limits which is quite surprising we check condition of the yoke and the trunnion which all look good then we obviously want to check our second blade so we'll just make sure our rotors are clear which they are so we can have a look at this blade a huge tail rotor leading edge again is in beautiful condition skin of the blades is good no hanger rash no damage Balance weight still in, very small amount of weight for such a large tail rotor blade. And then we're going to move forward down the drive shaft cover, again checking the integrity of the fasteners, onto the trailing edge of the stabilizer, onto the underskin, exactly the same as the other side, looking for any hanger rash or any in flight damage. Trailing edge of the end plate, again looks good. The leading edge of the end plate. Again, we're looking, same things, hang a rash, any kind of in-flight damage. The slat on the front for any kind of defect or damage. And the top skin of the stabilizer. And again, onto the side of the tail boom, onto the drive shaft cover. Moving forward, we're then going to check down the intake, uh, the exhaust of engine number one. Same as on engine number two. On engine number one, we want to have a, a look down the pipe. And again, checking for exactly the same things. We're looking at the condition of the turbine blades. Looking for any large amounts of oil pooling in the jet pipe, which there is none. And also that there's nothing taking up a nice warm home down the end of the exhaust. Moving forward, we will check engine fire bottle number one, which will be through this sight glass here. But as we explained earlier, this one's fire bottles are currently away for overhaul and inspection. And then we would move to the ox tank filler cap here and check it's secure and its integrity. And then we'll go down and check the wheel on this side. Again, the same as on the other side, we want to check the brakes which look good, the calipers, the brake lines, the oleo, we're looking for any chafing, any kind of leaks. Moving forward, checking the condition of the tyre, linkage in the undercarriage, and then we're going to have a look up in the wheel well and check that everything is secure and leak free, which it is, and it's good. And then our next step is to climb back up on the sponsor and check engine number one. Okay, we're ready to check engine number one, so same as on engine number two, climb up on the sponsor. So we're going to check the inlet plenum here, make sure that everything is correct, fasteners are on. This is for the oil cooler, this is the blower for that oil cooler, for, that's for transmission and both engines. And again we need our trusty torch, looking at the starter generator, again for leaks, any wires that are coming disconnected, any chafing, moving down, into the governor here, that looks good. Obviously, because the engines are identical, you can see the governor easier this side and the FCU easier on the other side. Again, looking to the bottom of the engine for any leaks, any kind of chafing. There's no oil leaks at all on this side, which is very nice to see. Igniter box for number one, all looks good. Into the intake side, again, we're looking for any cracks, any leaks. Onto the turbine section, for coloration, we're looking at the fuel nozzles again. Everything really does look very nice. This is all to do with the climate control. Obviously, it has air conditioning and climate control being a triple two. Everything in there looks absolutely fine. 
Then we're going to move forward. This is the oil level for engine number one, exactly the same as on engine number two. We can see our oil level here. And we're just going to have a look at the drive shaft, same as we did for engine number two, just to check for any grease or oil leaks. And we can actually see the rotor brake from here. It's really hard to see, but you can just get a good look at it to see if there's any form of leakage. Everything looks good. We want to look down engine number one's intake and make sure nobody has taken up residency, which again, we have no one. We check our hydraulic system number one, the oil level here, check that that is correct. We're going to move forward into hydraulic system number one. It's identical to system number two. We have a bypass filter here, so we check that the pink leg isn't poking out, which it isn't. We have a good look at the filters to make sure that they're dry. There's no obvious leaks. We check our lines here to make sure that they're okay. Again, there's going to be a little bit of residue. It's not a new aircraft, but they are predominantly dry. And again, from this side, we have another good look at the hydraulic servos. Again, checking for any leaks, any chafing. Everything looks very healthy. Looking on the hydraulic pump on this side, again, for any leaks, any chafing, absolutely nothing. And again, we can have another look at the other side of the nodal beam for the transmission, which again, looks very clean and very healthy. Looking forward to the manifold, the part that we couldn't see from the other side, everything looks very dry and exactly as it should look. And moving forward, we have our actuator here. Let's check that that is in good shape. The wiring is attached and there's no physical chafing. Everything looks good forward. And then from here, we're going to move up and check the rotor heading. So we just check the claws are on the nut, which they are. Um, then we're going to check the general condition of the trunnion and the head. And we've tried to see if any damage that's occurred to the head, either in the hangar or in flight. It's a bearingless head. It's all elastometric bearings. So we do want to check those and they are just through here. And we're just having a look for the general condition of the rubbers and make sure that nothing, if, the, if it starts to break down, it will swell and you'll see the plates starting to separate. What I can see from this side, they look absolutely brand new to be fair. We'll have a good look down the, lead, the top edge of the blades. Again, we're looking for hanger rash or damage. You really do get a scale of how big this rotor head is. I mean, it's enormous. As we said earlier, it's a derivative of the Cobra head. We're going to check our pitch link on this side and the corresponding side of integrity or any form of damage. We're going to check the mast. I mean, it's a huge mast, so it'll take an awful lot to damage this one. Now we're going to move down onto the swashplate linkage, which we did check from the other side, but there are two to check, so we haven't checked one side. We're just looking for any play or any wear or any enormous grease leaks. Just going to step down onto the lower step. And we want to check this area here. And this is all up from the servos, the pitch links change, just to check again for any form of damage or any wear or any chafing. And we can also get a good look down the top of each servo for again, checking for any kind of wear or leakage. There's three oil coolers along the back here. Uh, we just want to check that they're clear. There's a little bit of debris in these actually but we're just checking for any leaks on the oil coolers themselves. Quick check around the back of the gearbox. And again, we're looking for the obvious where chafing, leaking, etc. And everything appears to be exactly as it should. So pretty much that completes the check A for a Bell Trouble 2. Any questions or comments, please feel free to, leave, to contact us. We'll answer them as we can. And the next one to look forward to is the startup. Thank you.